So, higher and higher. Exercise 1-0 on the straight line. Last question, number 11. RSTU is a rhombus, and it gives you a couple of coordinates. Again, there's no diagram. Draw your own diagram so it helps you visualise it. Just approximate, because you can't read anything from it. A, R being the point, negative 4, negative 2. Put that in roughly. Negative 4, negative 2 would be about there. T being the point, 6, negative 4. So, T being the point... 6, negative 4. Not sure which sense they've named it in. If it's R, S, T, U or R, S, T, U. Normally you would name them anti-clockwise, but I'm not sure in this case. Then, find the equation of the diagonal R, T. One thing is for sure, they're opposite points. And one of the features of a rhombus is the diagonals are cut each other in half or eight angles. So, something like this, for instance. That's nothing like right angles, it doesn't matter. That would be the opposite diagonal. Not sure which to call which point yet. Maybe there will be further information. Right, find the equation of the diagonal RT. Well, that's just what's the equation of the line that goes from R to T. So if I want RT, I'll need two things. A point on it, spoiled for choice. I've got two of them. Gradient, right. Gradient of RT. Difference in Y over difference in X. Y2 minus Y1. There's no other points to confuse me, so I'll just go straight in with this. Normally you'd write them down. So I've got... Negative 4, take away negative 2, negative 4, plus 2, 6, take away negative 4, 6, plus 4. So that's going to be negative 2 upon 10, so that's negative a fifth. Meaning this line should be down shallow, and it is, so that looks about right. And then for the equation of the line, I've got, whoops, y minus b is mx minus a. Which point will I choose? I'll use the negative 4, negative 2, using those points. So y take away the y coordinate with y plus 2. Negative one fifth of x take away the x coordinate, so I'll be plus four, take away a negative, take the five across. Five y plus ten leaves the negative on this side, negative x minus four. So I've got x plus five y, bring that across, plus fourteen equals zero. So I'll put that down to this equation. B, find the equation of the diagonal SU. So for part B, I'm looking for S. U. Well, that means I need two things. I need a point on it and its gradient. It looks like I've got nothing so far. Well, I know the diagonals bisect each other, so I'll just call that point M. So I could find the midpoint of those two, and then I know it's perpendicular, so I can use the fact that they should multiply to get negative 1. Right, so what I'll do first, I'll work out M first of all. Well, M is going to be the midpoint of RT, which means that M is going to have coordinates of the average of those, negative 4 plus 6 upon 2, negative 2 plus negative 4 upon 2, which means m is going to be the point, adds up to 2, 2 upon 2 is 1, that's negative 6, that's negative 3, so m is the point negative 3. And then the gradient of su, gradient of su, since it's perpendicular, will be 5. Maybe I should have put a wee reason there. And then the equation of the line. So the line is going to be this, I'll just put it here. Y minus B equals MX minus A. I've just got those numbers staring in the face. I can't get confused by something else catching my eye, so I'll not bother writing them down. So Y minus the Y coordinate, Y plus the 3, is 5 times X minus the X coordinate. That's perfect, they're all integers. Y equals 5X minus 5, take away a 3, minus 8. Call that equation 2. Now, this last part, part C. RS has the equation, so R going to the point S, whichever it is, has this equation 3y equals 2x. Now 3y equals 2x has got a positive gradient, y equals 2 thirds, so it must be going up. So that must be the point S, and that must be the point U. So it's given me this line here, RS. Right, I'll put that down. So for part C, it's got RS has equation 3 y equals 2, I'll just put it in there, rs, equals 2x plus 2, call that number 3. Find the coordinates of s and u. Right, so to find s, I'm just going to do a substitution, because s will be where these two lines cross, the line that we called 3 and the line that we worked out with equation 2. So it'll be substitute 2 in the more complicated one, 3. So it's going to look like this. Write down equation 3. As soon as you hit y, substitute in. 
what y is equal to, and then continue with equation 3, 2x plus 2. So that's 15x minus 24 is 2x plus 2. Bring that over. Ooh, 13x equals 26, so x is 2. And then substitute x equals 2 in the simpler one, which is 2. So that y is going to equal 5 times the 2 minus 8. So y is going to be 10 minus 8 is 2 which means that S is the point 2, 2. And of course, you would just confirm that by putting 2, 2 into equation 3, just to check that in fact what 6 equals 4 plus 2. Yes, it does. Right, I need a bit of space. Still have to find what U is. <coughs> well, I don't need to find any more equations because I can just use count the boxes. Since that line's been bisected, However many steps it takes to get from S to M, it'll be the same from M to U. So just to find, going from S to M, how many forward or back, how many up or down? So however it takes you to get from S to M, remember that's not its length, and you can just do that from the numbers there. I suppose I could spell them out a bit better than I've been doing. So that means X coordinate wise, I'm going from two to one. So that means I'm going back one. I'm going from a Y coordinate of two down to negative three. So I'm going down 5. And that'll be exactly the same move as it takes to go from M to U. Which means that starting at M and applying 1 back and 5 down I'll arrive at U. So to get U I'll put down M's coordinate which is 1 coordinates which is 1 negative 3 and just do what this says. Go back 1, down 5 to replicate the same move. Back 1, down 5 which means use the point 0, negative 8. And that finishes the question.